Noah's Ark, for of sorts, for plants, uh, for plant life, opens in the Arctic Circle today. The facility, dubbed the Doomsday Vault, will house samples of the world's most important seeds as an insurance policy for mankind. Let's go live now to the Norwegian town of Longer, Longyearbyen, just north of the Arctic Circle, where our, see, uh, our very own Becky Anderson is uh, is at the inauguration of the vault. Did I get the name right, Becky? <laughs> Yeah, long year, bun. You nearly, you absolutely nearly, you're absolutely right. We are here in the Arctic, just a couple of degrees short, in fact, of the North Pole, which is that way. And we're here for a very special reason, as you uh, suggested, Adrian. We're here for the inauguration of what has become known as the Doomsday Vault. Now, that fits behind it. It's also being called a very modern day Noah's Ark. And let me tell you why. Inside the vault behind me is a very, very, very long tunnel going straight into that Arctic mountain. At the end of that tunnel are a series of vaults and inside those vaults in the weeks and months to come will be a series of aluminium envelopes like these. Eventually inside these envelopes are about 500 seed samples and eventually there'll be about two and a quarter billion seeds inside this mountain. Now the idea being but if global catastrophe strikes, the world's crops, at least, will be deep frozen inside that mountain. It's a project which has been funded by the Norwegian government to the tune of about $9 million. And there's a very important reason for this. We are facing, they tell us, a very perfect storm. Nine billion people on the planet by the year 2050. Uh, we've got the idea of global warming and climate change, which may affect us going forward. And there's no more land, which means the agricultural industry going forward is extremely unsustainable. The idea of this is that we will have the world's crops, at least samples of the world's crops there, in case of any sort of disaster. And it's important, uh, particularly for the developing world, as Wangari Matari, the Nobel Prize winner, told me a little earlier on. I think that it's a great vision, it's a great dream. For many nations, it is something that they need now, because there are very many nations in the world who are losing their seeds as we speak. And it would be great to know that their seeds are stored somewhere, they are safe, and tomorrow if they need them, they are accessible. And uh, let me just uh, put this into context for you, Adrian, before I go, because it's about minus 35 out here with a, a wind chill. Consider this, there were something like 7,000 varieties of apple, for example, just some years ago. 6,800 of those are now extinct. It's that sort of number that we're facing, and I'm told that we lose a variety of crop every other day. This is important. This is where our agricultural heritage will be stored going forward, and they, the seeds in this vault will be stored for something like 19 and a half thousand years. So if doomsday does arrive, as some people suggest it will, as long as there's one person left, they'll be able to get into this vault, dig out the seeds, and replant them. I'm off. It's absolutely freezing, Adrian. I will let you go in a moment. It wasn't until you spoke that I could tell it was you under all that, under that clothing. One, briefly, I, I, I want to know, why does it have to be in such a hell-forsaken place, so remote and, and such a cold place? If, if, if there is a, a catastrophe, <laughs> how can human beings get there? Ooh. Well, that, that, that's a very good point, but the idea of this is that these seeds need to be frozen inside an extremely secure environment, and the Norwegian government decided that, they, that this would be as good a place as any. You, you make a very good point. If there is a disaster, who's going to be able to get up here? But I guess if there's a disaster, people are going to find it difficult to get anywhere. The point of this place is that you can keep these seeds frozen at the temperature that they need to be frozen which is minus 20 in order for them not to deteriorate for thousands of years to come. So you make a very good point, but this is as good a place uh, the Norwegians and the international community tell me as any. Hadrian? Becky, go and get warm. I'm cold just looking at you. Many thanks indeed. Becky Anderson, live <laughs> in Norway.